All right. The other thing is that uh, this uh, this entire webinar will be recorded, so we will uh, we'll go ahead and uh, cre create a recording of this webinar and send out send out the link to to everyone um, uh, after the webinar. Now, just as a quick quick housekeeping or, or or show of hands to make sure that everything is all all set up here, um, can everyone hear me okay? And and if if you can hear me, um, I want you as an attendee to raise your hand on your GoToWebinar control panel. Uh, just so that way we can confirm that you know everyone can hear me okay. Okay. Yep. I uh, I get a few people raising their hands. Okay. So yes, everything's good here. Okay. So we'll go ahead and dive into the in, in, into the meat of the of the content. Um, so start off with the agenda. Um, I will talk a little bit. I'll just give some introduction about boundary systems, who we are, and then our main main partner with Flow EFD. Uh, and then we'll, we'll talk a little bit about some of the inefficiencies in current current product design, um, how you know Flow EFD handles handles or circumvents those inefficiencies, um, and then we'll dive into a demo of the software. And after that, we'll have some uh, questions and answers. So uh, if you have some questions right now, um, uh, just you know, hang tight or as the webinar goes on. If you have questions, you can type them into the Go to Webinar Control Panel, and then we'll go ahead and. Uh, and feel those questions afterwards. All right, so a little bit about Boundary Systems and who we are. So Boundary Systems is uh, a product development uh, a consulting company based out of Cleveland, Ohio, um, but really we have a reach that uh, that's really nationwide. Um, we Our main partner is PTC, and so we, we, we are a PTC Creo reseller, um, and we have many customers that use us for that, but we also have many other partners or software vendors that we, we, we work with. Um, our goal is really to bring the best solutions out there for our customers, regardless of, you know, if it's a PTC Creo product or a different product by a different vendor. Um, and we, we generally, you know, work with in terms of uh, product lifecycle management, uh, CAD data management, um, and, and, and also um, computer simulation, as well as just general, you know, CAD design and consulting as well. Now, a little bit about um, our main partner, Mentor Graphics. So, uh, Mentor Graphics was founded, you know, um, basically over 30 years ago, um, and their main mainstay uh, has been, you know, EDA pro uh, products, so electronics design and automation products, um, and really creating software that simulates the performance of of those uh, of those products. Um, but but not only that, they also have the mechanical analysis division, um, and basically what they do is, you know, they handle a few other software lines. Part of them, part of that involves, you know, Flow EFD as well, which we'll talk about. Um, and and just just as as a quick you know quick idea of their numbers, uh, they have you know annual revenues are you know 880 million dollars, uh, and so and I think this slide is probably dated by a couple of years, so it's probably even more than that. So. Um, they're definitely a very big, healthy, and robust uh, robust uh, partner to work with. All right, and so now, when it comes to um, currently what the what the landscape of uh, of product design looks like, particularly when it comes to analyzing products with uh, with CFD, um, currently the scenario looks like what you have on screen right here so you have your you know mechanical design right so you have your mechanical engineer um, uh, setting up the model you know creating the, the model based on different dimensions in whatever MCAD package you know he has uh, in this example here you know we'll talk about Creo parametric um, and then once that's done you know he goes ahead and tosses it over a fence to or I guess uh, not a literal fence probably a metaphorical fence to uh, a CFD analyst who then um, you know takes the model, loads it up, and puts it into into a CFD code. Uh, and both of these are completely different softwares, and so there has to be some you know knowledge transfer from one to another about how to set it up. Um, there's going to be some additional setup time from the CFD analyst to get everything set up and run correctly. Um, there's usually going to be um, a lot of time and effort spent in simply just translating the data, right? So, you know, from your MCAT package, you know, you have to save out maybe a step or an IGES or, and then the CFD analyst opens it up, you know, only to realize, you know, there may be one or two missing surfaces and then you have to go fix those surfaces and get a closed volume before you can even start the CFD analysis, right? 
Um, and so there's a lot of time and money wasted just in that phase alone, um, which then means that you have longer design cycles, right? So you miss you miss market windows. Um, and then not only that, but uh, what then happens if you want to, you know, do uh, do some what if variants, right? So uh, say, for example, you know, the mechanical engineer, you want to try, I don't know, five, six, eight, ten different variants of your design, right? What if we set this particular design, you know, ten different ways, change this dimension to ten different iterations, or we, you know, change, tweak our geometry four or five different ways, right? Now that's, you're just basically, you know, multiplying the work that the CFD analyst has to do because for each of those 10 different variants you're going to have to export 10 different uh, step files the analyst is going to have to import those 10 different step files and fix you know surface or geometry issues in all 10 of them before you can even start to run um, and so what we typically then find is you're basically just magnifying um, the the inefficiencies in the current system and it's very, very prohibitive for you to even do any what if variant, right? Um, which is part of the which is part of the the push behind a typical parametric software, right? It's the fact that it's parametrically based. You put in a dimension and your geometry responds to that dimension. Well if that's the case, why can't I have my CFD simulation code, you know, also respond to that as well? Why can't I change a dimension and automatically get a new geometry that I can easily put into my CFD code and, 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 and have it run run a new new simulation for me, right? And that is exactly where um, Flow EFD comes in. So Flow EFD is a uh, completely CAD embedded, um, uh, Flow EFD is a completely CAD embedded simulation software, a CFD simulation software that um, allows designers to to um, run run CFD analyses on on their products, you know, very quickly, very easily. Um, and and right now, C Flow EFD is is um, you know embedded into you know Creo. Uh, it's been embedded into Creo from uh, Creo Parametric, you know, three, two, one. And uh, the integration for Creo 4.0 is going to be coming probably in the next month or two as well. Um, it's all also integrated into into Katia, into NX, into Autodesk Inventor, um, and so they really did a good job of um, of of integrating it into existing CAD packages, uh, which is which is part of the benefit that um, that that you get with Flow EFD. Whenever you 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 know you're, you're talking with them, um, it's never really a case of you know. Here's our own software. You know, go install it on your computer and figure it out. No, usually they start with you know what CAD package are you using, and odds are there is a Flow EFD integration for that for that CAD package specifically. Right. Now, what um, what makes Flow EFD better than the competition? Right, is is that um, you, you basically have, you know, concurrent CFD capability or concurrent CFD analysis capability. So um, you're putting CFD simulation into the hands of mechanical engineers and designers um, and not necessarily the, the CFD specialists, right? Uh, you're empowering your, your CFD, your um, mechanical engineers to perform fast and accurate CFD simulations, um, which is good because number one, it frees up time for your CFD analysts or specialists to do the much more, you know, um, um, computationally intensive work, right? While you democratize CFD in your organization to other people that that uh, can can handle, you know, the less intensive uh, CFD analyses, um, you can shorten your lead time or, or your design cycle times that way. Um, and then, as a result of that, it completely reduces the need for, you know, um, having multiple prototypes and having to build a physical prototype, you know, take it to um, a wind tunnel or a test lab and then, you know, put some put some sensors on it to, to get data. Um, it, 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 it reduces the need for that because you can test out many different design variants right inside of your, C right inside of your um, CAD package. Uh, all right. Um, 
Now, not only are you fully, you know, you know, fully uh, integrated with um, within your CAD package, so that way you can have your your mechanical engineer work with the model, um, but you're already you're also directly using your your MCAD geometry, or in this case, your Creo parametric geometry. So um, there's automatic detection of of you know your flow domain, right? Um, there's you don't have to export a you know a file from one software to come into another software. Um, you have you know no translation necessary, and so you have no loss in geometric fidelity. So you know however accurate Creo parametric defines your services is the same accuracy that Flow EFD is going to take whenever it's um, it's running those simulations um, inside of uh, inside of the code. All right. Um, now, another another enabler in Flow EFD technology, and this is really big, is uh, is the immersed boundary meshing, right? So, Flow EFD does a much much better job of meshing the of meshing the the geometry compared to other CFD codes out there. Um, so, um, one of the things you'll you'll notice if you've used other CFD packages is um, they are very particular about the kind of geometry they'll work with, um, and if you don't give it good geometry, uh, the mesher will either not work or take an incredibly long time to mesh. And so there's a lot of manual work to even set up your geometry in order for it to be meshable in the first place, right? Uh, well, Flow EFD doesn't deal with any of that. Flow EFD works with quote-unquote dirty CAD geometry much much easier and much much quicker than other CFD codes. Um, I mean, they've done benchmark studies where, you know, um, something that takes easily uh, four, five, six hours to mesh in in ANSYS Fluent, you can mesh in an hour or less in Flow EFD, right? Um, now. Not only do you have that, but um, with Flow EFD, there's also an automatic mesh refinement or unrefinement um, uh, capability as well. So, for example, in the screenshot in the bottom right corner, um, you'll notice um, uh, you, you not only can you change the geometry to say, for example, you know, um, from an open position, we we, we change that um, uh, that valve to a slightly more closed position. Um, but Flow EFD has the ability to automatically refine the geometry, the mesh in areas of high gradient. So, for example, you'll notice in this case uh, there's there are finer meshes, you know, where you have a smaller orifice or a smaller a smaller opening, because there are going to be higher gradients of velocities and pressures in that location, um, and all of that is done automatically. Again, so you know, I don't have to be an expert in looking at or interpreting a CFD mesh. Um, I can start off with a good baseline and have Flow EFD, you know, compensate for that and and refine the mesh where needed. And so, really, the benefit there is that um, you're completely reducing your your manual meshing time. Um, uh, you don't need you know CFD expertise in order to use Flow EFD, um, and yet you know you can still get very accurate results uh, with the software. All right. Um, another benefit is um, is when it comes to the the turbulence modeling technology. So uh, again, any other any other CFD package out there, you talk about um, whenever you're looking at the uh, turbulence modeling technology, uh, usually they have you know multiple different turbulence models for different flow regimes and different applications, and so. Part of the question then becomes which one do you select, right? Uh, some some have as many as 20 different turbulence models, right? Um, and you can't take, you know, um, a solution from turbulence model one and just run with that because who knows? Maybe you should have used turbulence model eight or 15 or 20, right? Um, in this case with Flow EFD, it takes the the guesswork out of all of that because there's one turbulence model that captures many different flow regimes, everything from laminar flow to transitional to turbulent flow to um, to hypersonic flows to uh, um, supersonic flows and, and subsonic flows. Um, there's one turbulence model that captures all of that, right? 
And so the benefit then is um, you can you can model all these flow regimes without having to be a specialist in, you know, the RANS K epsilon model or, you know, the SST K omega model or all these, you know, big high sounding, you know, um, um, names that really don't mean much to a design engineer. As a design engineer, all you care about is can I test my model to see how it's going to work and if it's if it's going to if it's going to run or if I have any issues with it. Right. And you can do that because Flow EFD completely simplifies the uh, turbulence modeling um, um, technology. All right. Um, now another another um, huge uh, what's it called benefit that Flow EFD has. And this I think it's it's really incredible. Is is that um, uh, they have you know some automatic what they call partial cells um, that really help capture flow within the boundary layer um, of a of a CFD analysis. Um, and again, you, you can simply think of it as you know. Um, Wherever there is high gradient, so for example, you know, wherever you have velocity or pressure going from, you know, zero to a huge number very, very quickly, right? Um, that's a case where you would need a lot of mesh, right? So the easiest example is whenever you're, you know, you're driving outside and you have raindrops on your windshield and you're going 40 miles an hour on the interstate and yet you see the raindrop, you know, sitting on your windshield without moving, right? Well, that's because right on your windshield, uh, the velocity is is basically zero, right? And if you move a few inches away from your windshield, the velocity of the air going over your car is 40 miles an hour, right? Because that's how fast you're driving. And so within that very short distance, um, if you were going to use a CFD code to analyze that, you would typical CFD codes will need a lot of mesh within that region because they need to capture that huge gradient from zero to, you know, 40 or 50 miles an hour, right? Well, in this case, Flow EFD has some proprietary technology, which they call partial cells, um, that fully capture all of that um, information within them um, in much less uh, uh, mesh grid cells than a typical, a typical um, CFD code would use. So instead of having to, you know, put five, six, or seven mesh cells in the boundary layer and then measure the Y plus value to see, you know, how accurately you're measuring that. Um, Flow EFD really doesn't care for all of that. Um, it uses partial cells and your partial cells are incredibly accurate at, at, uh, at capturing what's going on inside of, the, uh, of your boundary layer walls. And so again, you're getting very accurate simulations. Um, you don't need specialized expertise to set it up, um, and and you, you, again, you're you're saving yourself tons and tons of time uh, because you don't have to you know double or triple your mesh just to get accurate results at um, at boundary layer um, uh, flows. All right, so at this point, I'll pause here for a second and uh, switch gears and, and and show show a quick demonstration of of the software. This guy. Pull down PowerPoint. Okay, so right now we are in uh, in Creo Parametric, right? And so if you if you take a look here, I'll just 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 for effect and just to show what's going on, I'll say let's go here. Um, right now I am in Creo Parametric, you know, 3.0 date code M110, right? Um, this is completely within Creo Parametric right now. I have my model tree. I have my you know, parts, and I have my subassemblies in here. Um, this is just a typical Creo subassembly, uh, sort of Creo assembly, right? Um, now, in this case, I have uh, what's it called? Uh, a simple, you know, um, um, PCB assembly. So I have my my PCB board. I have a few computer chips on there that are going to be generating some heat. I have a heat sink right here in the middle, um, and then there's and then there's a housing over it here. Um, and, and, and then I also have a fan that's going to vent out, vent out some of that heat, right? Um, and so, and so really the goal is, you know, how do I position my fan in this case, um, to get me, 
you know the best best cooling and uh, and and really minimize minimize my heat uh, or I guess the temperatures that my my computer chips run at and in this case what I really care about is my CPU chip right here in the middle uh, that's the one that that I really care about right that's the one I want to I want to really um, uh, optimize right now I want to so I've set all of this up I've designed everything inside of Creo parametric I want to set this I want to go into a flow simulation right um, and doing that is as easy as clicking on this tab over here that says flow analysis right and in that one click I have everything I need to run a flow simulation or a CFD simulation with flow EFD embedded inside of Creo parametric right now I just want I'll just pause here and point out that that is incredibly huge because um, I'm not exporting anything. I'm not, you know, ex saving out a step file. I'm not importing anything to any other software. I'm not having to specify, you know, minimum values for geometry tolerance or things like that. Um, all I do is click on one tab and I'm in my CFD modeling environment, right? Uh, so this is huge because it's it's completely embedded inside of your existing Creo interface, right? I don't have to remember how to, you know, um, work in in um, in my other CFD code. I don't have to get used to a new interface. I don't have to get used to a new way of navigating or or manipulating my model. Uh, the same way I'm used to using Creo parametric is the same way I will use Flow EFD, right? In fact, even if I, I flip over to this additional tab over here, uh, Flow EFD has. Um, a project tree that works basically the same way as your Creo parametric uh, model tree, right? So they, they've gone through a huge amount of, uh, of effort to, to make sure that the same way you're able to use your existing CAD, you know, uh, knowledge is the same way you're able to use Flow EFD, right? That's a huge benefit. Just the fact that you can click on one tab and you have, you know, your, all of your, your CFD um, data available for you to use. Or CFD tools available for you to use. Now, I'll go ahead and start off by creating a new project here. Um, and again, they've done a good job of of, uh, of having a very simple wizard that can sort of guide you through most of the steps in creating this uh, in, in in creating the project, right? And again, Flow EFD has some very very easy to use, you know. Um, um, a very easy to use UI. Even talking about something like units, right? Units are the, you know, the bane of engineers uh, and, and scientists. You know, many times I wonder why there's so many unit systems. Again, with Flow EFD, we can, you know, select from a specific uh, a unit system, right? Um, and even from those default, from that default list, we can still customize what we want. Okay, I don't want length in meters. I want it to give me length in millimeters, right? I can ask for that, right? Um, I want it to give me temperatures in Fahrenheit. Uh, no one really talks about Kelvin, so sure, I'll ask for Fahrenheit, and boom, I get that, right? Um, and so it's very easy to customize to what you prefer or what you want, right? Um, if I want to save this as a new unit system, I can go ahead and create that and save it as a new unit system, so that way I can just automatically select that whenever I get into into the into the software. In this case, this is a. In this case here, this is a combination of some uh, external plus internal flow because I'm going to be venting out of these these vent holes over here. I'll be flowing air out of these these vent holes over here, um, and flow air is going to be flowing inside of the case. Um, and so, and flow EFD can handle all of that. All I do is pick. In this case, I wanted to have an external flow, right? Um, and in this case, I also want to take a look at you know at some uh, some conduction through through um, solids as well. Right now, I'll go ahead and pick make a few other picks. I'll say I want to simulate um, the analysis with air, um, and then let's see for my solids. I'm just going to say most of my solids are made out of uh, aluminum 6061. So I'll select that and then hit next. And uh, that's basically everything I need currently to, to, to set up and run the 
and run the um, I guess to, to start off with my setup of, uh, of, of my CFD simulation now in this case you'll notice float EFD is automatically placed in here um, um, a CFD volume or a flow domain right within which air is going to flow um, and again it automatically sizes it based on you know the size of your geometries and everything you have in here um, and so I don't need to go look up you know um, uh, formulas on how to size my CFD flow domain and make sure that you know it's you know accurately sized on all sides and all that all that different thing all of those different things um, it automatically sizes my flow domain for me automatically right now in this case I'll say let's go ahead and hide this here because I already have that um, and I'll go ahead and, and apply some materials to these to these components here so I'll say let's uh, insert a solid um, and I'll say I want to pick the case um, let's see here yep and the cover and also my heat sink all three of those are going to be made from uh, aluminum right uh, and so we'll go ahead and pick that Um, and next I'm going to go ahead and tell it that we have a fan in this case uh, um, over here so I'll actually hide my um, hide my cover temporarily for now and this guy okay um, and now I can just go ahead and insert a fan I can tell it hey this is a fan um, and I can pick in this case uh, what's it called you know what my what faces um, you know uh, air is flowing through so in this case air flows you know out from that face and and you know flows into the fan from this face over here um, we can go ahead and pick uh, pick whatever fan we select and you'll notice flow EFD comes with a huge library of uh, predefined uh, in this case fan curves right but they also have many other engineering data that we that, that we can use as well right so you'll notice this completely this basically eliminates Google right so I don't have to go Google oh you know what's my fan curve for you know my Pabst 412 fan that I want to use right I can easily just come in here select that paps and I can go okay where's my paps 412 fan right it already comes built in with the fan curve for that particular for that particular fan I can just hit my check mark and there we go right it, it shows me here that you know you're going to be using a fan through through that um, uh, uh, entity right there right um, next I'm gonna say okay I need to get some um, uh, well, all these chips here with some that have some heat generation so I'll go ahead and pick on these these four chips here these are my RAM chips right so I'll say hey let's go uh, tell it that we have um, some heat generated through those chips and uh, say each of those chips is generating about two watts of heat right um, there we go um, next up my uh, my GPU uh, over here is going to be generating about 8 watts of heat so we'll go ahead and select that as well um, right um, and then uh, I in this case I'll have my, uh, my my CPU over here at the bottom and in, in the most accurate way to model that I could technically use you know just a typical 10 watts of heat across the entire volume uh, but the most accurate way to model that would be to use um, a, a two resistor component right um, and in this case it's very easy for me to go ahead and pick from a predefined library of two resistor components right um, and I'll just have to yep it's this guy over here so 35 by 35 um, and in this case there's going to be about 10 watts of heat dissipated you know through that um, through that uh, through that CPU chip and you'll notice flow EFD is still smart enough to, to give me some uh, some error checking as well so it still says hey I need an additional selection for the surface that heat is passing through to the heat sink and I can easily go ahead and um, and say let's go ahead and select that so say uh, say let's do this and um, yep we'll do that 
and there we go. Now that has um, yeah, 10 watts of heat passing through that, right? Um, now next, I'll go ahead and uh, pick my um, material for my PCB. You know, that's going to be just a typical 2S2P. So I'll say I want to print it circuit board, and I'll define that as 2S2P and say we're good to go. Yeah. Now, the way Flow EFD also works is by uh, specifying um, by specifying goals, right? So what we want to track particularly are certain quantities. So for example, uh, my critical quantity that I really want to know about is how hot my CPU gets, right? So I can easily go in here and create um, a goal and just tell it, hey, um, let me let me know what my CPU temperature is, right? So I'll I'll just say, hey, tell me the maximum temperature of that solid, and I'll just say that CPU temp, right? Yeah. Um, next, yeah, it probably would be you know it wouldn't hurt to to know how hot my uh, my CPU my, my my RAM chips get as well, so. I'll go ahead and pick those as well and do the same thing. I know. Um, and you'll notice in this case, I picked four of those. I can get individual measures for each of those by just checking this one simple box over here and boom. Flow EFD automatically creates, you know, four different goals for all four of those different chips, right? Um, so again, it, it simplifies my work. Instead of me doing it four times, I can just do it once and and get um, and get and get everything I need for those. And now I'll do the same for my uh, for my GPU over here. And Um, all right, so now I basically have everything I need uh, in terms of setting this up uh, uh, to run, right? Um, now I can go ahead and, uh, and, and, and run run an analysis and, and start to take a look at my temperatures, right? Um, now for this particular example, I'll switch to uh, I'll switch to a project where I already have have some results so that way we're not running running results live right now. Um, and in this case, you'll notice I can begin to take a look at, for example, you know, um, what the temperatures are on my on my heatsink. And you'll notice what Flow EFD is doing. It's displaying the information directly on my Creo geometry, right? Um, I'm not I'm not having to. It's not opening up a new window or doing something else where um, the 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 way it's embedded becomes pretty cumbersome. It's using my Creo geometry exactly um, when, when displaying all this information, right? Um, I can begin to see, for example, you know, um, how my heat sink is being used effectively. You know, if I have, in this case, cooler areas of my heat sink um, or, you know, sp uh, uh, warmer areas of my heat sink, right? Um, yeah. Now, not only that, I can also, in this case, I'll go ahead and hide that, hide that plot here. I'll also create a plot through, um, through the um, uh, what's it called, the entire geometry, and show, in this case, you know how, um, you know how the temperature varies through that, right? So I can, I can clearly see, you know, yeah, you know, some of these RAM chips, you know, get a little hot. Um, uh, my my GPU chip isn't isn't as as terribly hot. My uh, CPU, on the other hand, is really cooking. It's right around 117 degrees C right now, right? Um, that's really really hot. And 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 I need to you know I want to minimize that temperature as much as I can instead of just getting it uh, you know 117 degrees uh, uh, C. And so all of this information you can get from 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 within from within Flow EFD. I can go ahead and say let's hide this. Um, and I'll go ahead and create some flow trajectories, right? So this shows, you know, how flow flow is, you know, coming into the into the system from from the side vents, right? Um, I can begin to spot, for example, over here I have have a recirculation zone, right? Um, and also a little bit over here as well, um, and also underneath my board as well, there have some recirculation zones, um, 
but you can also yeah but this is something easy you can go ahead and play and animate you know how air flows through your through your system right and the beauty of this is this is all straight within Creo right I'm not in any other CAD package whatsoever or simulation software whatsoever all of this is running right within Creo parametric Now we'll take it, you know, uh, a couple of steps further, um, and, uh, and and for right now I'll go ahead and um, and pause this here. Now, say for example, now, now I'll, I'll flip out out of uh, Flow EFD for a second. Um, let me hide these. Okay, and I'll go back and pull pull back uh, these components here that are hidden. Yeah. Now, I mentioned initially when I started this that I wanted to determine the optimal position for my fan, right? Um, and my fan is basically controlled by, or the position of my fan is controlled by the position of these vent holes, uh, which are controlled by uh, this particular uh, axis over here in Creo, right? This axis A367, um, that axis is mounted at, you know, currently in this case, um, at a distance of 35. Um, millimeters from 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 the right over here and so if I go ahead and you know change that and say let's you know see what it's like at 75 for example um, I can regenerate my Creo model Creo regenerates and now in this new position I can go ahead and test it out and see you know um, what my new flow flow measure would be or, or I guess what what my new um, um, temperatures would be from this from this case here and it's as simple as flipping back into my you know flow EFD tab and hitting run right uh, so again I'll, I'll pause here and and just point out how huge this is right so with any other CFD code you have right you would have to export the model a second time right um, create a step file and then import that step file into your new CFD package uh, fix any geometry issues that pop up, right? Uh, all of that could easily take an additional hour of your time, if not more, um, before you even start to set up your analysis all over again, right? You would have to assign your materials again, assign your boundary conditions, your heat generation sources, your CPU to register component all over again, just to then see what the improvement would be, right? In this case, with Flow EFD, I change one dimension in Creo Parametric click on a new tab and I can click on my run button again and get results so you're saving an incredible amount of time um, without sacrificing accuracy right um, flow EFD will automatically do the remeshing and rerunning of your of your analysis or this of your model and so this then means that you can save time get to market quicker um, and dramatically improve the quality of your of your products because um, you can now test multiple design variants very quickly and easily. Now, not only will we do that, but I'll even take it a step further and say, um, in this particular example, uh, I'll actually flip back, flip back to my project here, um, and uh, actually I'll flip back to this guy. And um, change that to say I'll move it back to its initial spot. Yep. Okay. And instead of me having to manually, you know, move this back and forth and then you know run the simulation at those different spots, I want Flow EFD to do that for me automatically. Right. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and uh, create. Uh, what's it called? A parametric study, right? And the, the goal of the parametric study is a couple things. In this particular example, what I will do is um, is a design of experiments and optimization, right? Um, and so what I'll basically do is I'll give Flow EFD some input variables. In this case, I can give it Creo dimension or Creo parameters, or some of my setup parameters from Flow EFD. In this case, I will just give it that one dimension here, right? Um, and I can give it as many dimensions as I want. In this case, I'm just going to give it one input dimension. 
Um, and I'm going to say in this case, uh, let's see, I want to change, vary that dimension from 35 millimeters to, say, about 140 millimeters, right, all the way from the left to the right. You know, I want to see, see how you, you know, how the, you know, temperature varies across that entire range. Next, I'll go ahead and pick some output parameters. I'll say, um, okay, what am I really interested in? Um, and for me, the critical thing I'm interested in is my CPU temp, right? Um, uh, the others, yeah, I can, you know, it would be good if those are lower, but my critical thing is my CPU temperature. The lower that runs, the better, the faster the chip, you know, the, uh, uh, the chip operates. And so that's my, that's my main goal, right? And then I'll come over here, and uh, now I can tell Flow EFD to, to, you know, generate some scenarios for me. Okay, how many different experiments do I want to run? You know, do I want to run two, five, eight, ten experiments, right? I can specify as many as I want for it, right? Um, I can also then specify, you know, how many simultaneous runs, you know, Flow EFD has. Um, and this, you know, I can do for, um, based on, you know, how many Flow EFD solver licenses I have. So in this case, um, I have, you know, an eight core processor machine on this particular computer. Um, so I can say, hey, let's create eight experiments, right? Um, it automatically generates the experiments for all eight of those. I can say, hey, uh, let's have eight simultaneous runs. Um, and I can tell it from my number of cores, let's use, you know, um, one core per experiment, and I can just hit go, right? Now, think about the time savings there. Instead of having to sit there and wait while Flow EFD runs, you know, experiment one, and then runs two, and then runs three, and then runs four, um, if you have the computing resources for it, you can run multiple experiments in parallel at one time, right? You're saving yourself incredible amounts of time without losing uh, um, um, fidelity of your results, and you can still, you know, dramatically improve your designs just by 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 running it this way. Now, again, just as in the other example, I'll flip to another project where I already ran ran some uh, some examples here. So I'll flip back to back to this guy. Um, What's this? Yeah, and in this case, it's the same thing. So I'm changing that dimension, that 35 number over here. Um, I have my output parameters, just my CPU temperature. And in this case, I ran, you know, um, eight different experiments, right? Uh, and based on all of that, um, the additional thing I then went ahead and did is I told Flow EFD to find the optimal dimension, right? Uh, because the optimal could be something that I ran. So, for example, you know, it ran the dimension at, I don't know, say, for example, in this case, the lowest lowest CPU temperature I got was um, somewhere over here. So at 65 was about 100. At 80, it was about 101. So somewhere within this range, right? But I don't know if the lowest is 100 or if it could be lower than that. And so I can simply tell Flow EFD, hey, find me the optimal, even if it's not one of these scenarios I tested. And Flow EFD comes and says, hey, your optimum is, in this case, setting the dimension to 71.37. You know, and then not only, and then I can then tell Flow EFD, hey, let's run an analysis on that particular data set or in that particular scenario to see how that will, how that com you know, comes out and in this case flow EFD says you know um, your you know um, at that at that particular uh, uh, set you know your your temperature comes down to under a hundred uh, degree C so in basically you know one sit down you know um, uh, uh, session I'm able to you know, drop down my the temperature of my CPU by at least you know 18, um, uh, almost 20 degrees C, just by just by you know optimizing with with Flow EFD, right? Uh, and again, the ability to do these parametric studies um, within your CAD package is made entirely possible simply because uh, Flow EFD is embedded into your your um, 
CAD package. You're not having to export this out to another software. You're not having to do, you know, any geometry manipulation or creating step files or whatever else you have. Um, Flow EFD goes ahead and generates, you know, um, um, generates all of that parametric data, runs it on your model straight inside of Creo Parametric, and and again, so you're basically saving yourself incredible amounts of time, right? Um, and you're dramatically increasing the amount of product insight and knowledge you can get, uh, which thereby means you can create better products, you can create smarter products, you can beat your competitors to market faster, and you can create better mousetraps, you know, simply uh, than they can. Um, uh, yeah, simply put. Um, and so those are the huge benefits for having Flow EFD. Um, it's it's a really really great tool that I've come to you know to really like you know over the last couple um, couple weeks. Um, and so at this point, we'll switch over to, to our questions and answers. So if you have any questions, uh, you can go ahead and, uh, and, and, and write them into the, into the GoToWebinar control panel for the, for the questions there, and we'll go ahead and, uh, and field those. Okay. Um, so I have a first question here. So the person asks, uh, in this case, you optimized, um, you know, um, one dimension. Could you do multiple dimensions and also have multiple goals? Um, and the answer for that is uh, is an absolute yes. Um, in this example, um, I just I just did one, but we can have, you know, two, three, four, five different uh, inputs that we're trying to optimize, um, and also we can have multiple goals as well. Um, and and yeah, and we, we can set up you know an adequate number of trials for a flow EFD to test, and and we can go ahead and do that as well. Uh, we're not just limited to having you know one input, one output. Um, in fact, you know that's something where I'll, I'll probably I'll probably talk with uh, talk with our marketing guys and see if we can see if we can schedule uh, a deeper dive uh, uh, flow EFD optimization uh, webinar sometime in the future. So that may be coming. Uh, um, you can keep an eye out for that. Um, next question is: uh, Can you export the temperatures into Creo Simulate and do a structural analysis? Um, uh, and uh, the answer to that is an absolute yes. Um, uh, right from within Flow EFD, you can you can export the results from there to Creo Simulate, and then um, and then and then go from there. So actually, I'll I'll flip back flip back here and uh, and show that really quickly. So I'll say. Uh, Flip back to this here. Yeah. Okay. Um, so again, I have my my. Uh, I'm back in, in Flow EFD over here, and if I want to export my results, I can just go and say, "Yep, let's export results." It asks, "What do you want to export it to?" I can say, "Hey, let's export it to Creo Simulate." Um, I can either give it an existing Creo Simulate mesh to interpolate my results onto, or I can just tell it to pass my Flow EFD mesh to Creo Simulate. Right? Um, I can specify what loads I want to I want to export: structural or thermal. Right? Um, and I can go ahead and export that. Right? So the answer to that is an absolute yes. You can. You know, run a thermal analysis here from within Flow EFD, pass that onto Creo Simulate, and have Creo Simulate then run the uh, structural um, interactions from you know thermal expansion and things like that. All right. Um, another question is: uh, Do we need um, an, an advanced uh, Creo license, or will the basic uh, basic license work? Um, the way this so for Creo. Specifically, um, no, you do not need an advanced license. Uh, the cheapest license of Creo Parametric you can buy will be able to run Flow EFD, right? Um, now, on the other hand, for Flow EFD, um, uh, there are about four or five different license flavors that they offer um, that are in addition to the base, um, and those come specifically when you want to do some, you know, specific um, uh, application. So, for example, 
um, you know, there's an LED module, right? So if you're designing, you know, headlamps for the automotive industry with, for LED, with LEDs, you know, that, that would be applicable to you. Um, or there's an electronics cooling module, right? Um, and so if, you have, if you're doing a lot of electronics cooling, that would be applicable to you. And so uh, for Flow EFD, there are specific license um, uh, uh, additional options you can purchase. Um, but what do you need for Creo in order for it to run? the cheapest license of Creo Parametric you can get will allow you to run Flow EFD. All right. Um, next question here says, um, with one license, uh, what is the maximum number of iterations we can run? Um, for Flow EFD, um, a license of uh, a Flow EFD allows you to run, um, a license of a Flow EFD solver allows you to run one concurrent um, uh, analysis and so that's a case where if you have if you you know realize you're going to be doing multiple experiments quite often uh, you, you know you can purchase a couple of licenses a couple of solver licenses of flow EFD um, you, you can only use you know one one primary interface license but use a couple of solver licenses um, and then run multiple multiple experiments in parallel that way as well Okay. Um, another question is um, how many cores can be used, um, and uh, and do you need an HPC license to use all cores? Um, so, sort of piggybacking off of that question, um, the answer for that is um, e Flow EFD can use as many cores as it detects on your computer, um, and you do not need an HPC license in order to use that. Um, uh, the the basic license of Flow EFD will already be allow you to use, you know, multiple cores. Um, now there is an option to, you know, if, if you have a, a high performance computing cluster or a Linux cluster, you can, you know, solve your Flow EFD project on that. Uh, but again, that's completely separate. Um, in this computer, I have eight cores. I can set up an analysis right now and run an analysis on all eight cores. All right. Um, now, now th th there are quite a few questions popping in here, so we may not may not get a chance to answer all all the questions. But uh, whatever questions we don't answer on here, we'll follow up with you with you um, offline. All right. Um, next question here is, uh, you know, can you create a feedback between Creo Simulate and Flow EFD so that the uh, Structural analysis is exported back to Flow EFD, and the CFD solution is recalculated. Um, and currently, for that, uh, you cannot do that. So, whenever you're talking about that, that's sort of getting into getting into fluid structure interactions, um, and and that you 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 would not be able to do um, currently with, uh, with with Flow EFD. All right. Um, let's see. So let's see. Yeah. So th those are all the questions we'll be going to be able to get get at today. Um, for any other questions, uh, for any other people that ask questions and and yours wasn't answered live, uh, I'll go ahead and send out an email to you directly uh, um, later on during the week uh, uh, with a direct response to your questions. So. So um, yeah, yeah, we'll make sure we, we address all those questions. All right. Um, thank you so much for your questions and for attending today's webinar. Uh, we really do appreciate your um, your engagement and feedback. Um, if you need any more any more information about uh, Flow EFD, um, how it runs in Creo, um, if you need a demo or whatever it is, um, you can by all means you know uh, uh, send me an email. Um, my contact information is up on the screen. Um, if you need um, uh, some, so if, if yeah, if, if you need some uh, um, information for sales, you know pricing, how much it is, um, you can go ahead and send. Um, 
and, uh, and and contact Steve as well. He's our he's our primary sales sales guy on this. Um, his phone number is up on there, and um, I'll just go ahead and uh, update his email. Oops. Yeah. There we go. Um, yeah. And um, so yeah. So that's you know Steve's email. You can go ahead and uh, and. and and send him a quick email uh, if you if you have any questions on um, on pricing, um, and the answer you know can we get this webinar material? Uh, yes, uh, we will be sending out um, a a recording of this webinar after afterwards. So um, thank you very much. Uh, we really do appreciate uh, uh, you you know attending this this webinar, and we look forward to having you on future um, boundary webinar Wednesdays. Thanks a lot.